Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to try out these Create Your Own Paper Miniature uh, kits. Actually I'm going to just try one of them, I just wanted to show the options that I found. And what immediately uh, caught my eye was that it mentioned that it's laser cut and it said that one of these takes about two hours and it gives you the difficulty. These are again by Craft & Co. We definitely seen this brand before and so far their stuff was pretty decent quality for the pricing. But today I decided to make the miniature garden house. The other one I'm probably gonna give to a friend if the quality is right. So let's have a look inside. I also like uh, that they give us the measurements in the back, which means that if you have a limited space, you can actually see uh, which size you get and if it will fit. And the other handy thing is that the packaging completely unfolds. First of all, it's a cardboard that is definitely good for crafting. And second of all, it is uh, very handy for if you want to throw it away. And here are all the instructions. They seem pretty simple. And uh, this is the result in the end. And they have like four different joints. So they have a glue joint, a push joint, slide joint, and uh, basically a curving joint, whatever. And they also suggest us to use tacky glue to hold them so we don't have to hold the pieces. So I actually picked up some tacky glue that I always wanted to try out because uh, normally you don't really find tacky glue here. Uh, so I'm excited to try this brand out. It was in the same shop. I got all of these from Action, by the way. Um, it's like a very affordable uh, store that has a lot of crafting goods, but also some home decor goods. And inside we actually get some flocking and a string that I'm gonna put securely away so I don't lose them. And then we get the base and a lot of different pieces. It looks like we have some vines that escaped and this like drawer kind of thing and you can kind of uh, see the laser cut lines especially on the brown part here uh, because they have this like burn edge feathering but from the outside they look really clean so let's actually start making the first plant pot I was really afraid at first that uh, they would be too attached but they came out really easily yes they are bendable if you're not careful enough but if you just carefully peel them out the tabs come loose really easily and I didn't have any problems with anything ripping or folding over that shouldn't fold over uh, during the sole project which uh, I think is very good. The fold lines in these are very easy to follow since they're kind of a little bit perforated. And all I did was pre-fold this thing, uh, slide in the like, I guess it's meant to be dirt base in. This is a joint that they say is just a stick joint. They, they, it has the like wider outside and thinner base so you stick it through and then you don't glue it. Uh, I will probably put some glue there anyways. And I'm definitely gonna put some glue around the outside uh, joint where you stick the plant pot together. But so far it was pretty easy to put together. All I had to do is just bend over that hub, which was a little bit fiddly to get in, but it wasn't too, too much of a struggle. It just took a couple seconds longer because of the way uh, the slit was bent. But once I got it, uh, it was actually pretty sturdy, even without any glue. I, I still really want to secure this with some glue, just in case uh, I drop it or something and I have to redo this. And since uh, I had the joint on the bend, I just wanted to make sure that it doesn't slip open. So all I did was use a toothpick and put some tacky glue in. As for the plants, these I'm just gonna slot in, I'm not actually gonna glue them in. Next up, I made uh, some of the tiny parts. I basically just followed the instructions step by step on uh, what I should make. So we have some boxes, we have the lantern, and we have a lot of plants that actually look really cute. 
Some of them actually have slits. It looks like they were absolutely made for being slit into the base. Uh, though if you want to use them in other paper craft dioramas, I'm sure you can just cut off the like uh, tabs for the slits and just basically place it anywhere you want. I think it's just that they wanted it to be secure. What I thought was interesting was the folding technique for these fertilizer bags. They want you to like half fold it and run it over. I actually found it easier to use my uh, wood tool that you usually use to make creases into paper to get a smooth fold to just score the edges a little bit basically and that helped me get a cleaner fold. And in the end I think they look really cute as like bags. And then of course we have the plant pots, which are also curve and joint. Uh, here the tacky glue really came to shine. Now of course, uh, like most tacky glues that I've heard of, um, at least from other people's experience, uh, it needs to dry a little bit to actually be tacky. But uh, once it was like dried a tiny bit, which is why I applied only a thin layer, uh, I didn't really have to hold the plant pots for long. It was super easy. As for these uh, planters that should be in a display, the tabs didn't really hold the planter together, so I decided to just uh, put tacky glue around all of the edges and just uh, basically put them together that way. Again, I'm not gluing in the plants in case I want to like switch them out or something, uh, but that worked actually uh, pretty well to hold the planters. They have a slight angle, which I think is nice. The look of them with the uh, color choices definitely fit. It looks like there's like kind of dirt in it. I guess they could have used the texture, but uh, like in the print, but I don't think that would have really done anything. Like looks like it's, I like this like smooth paper look a bit more because it's something that you can actually make yourself super easily just pick up some of the like colored cardstock, uh, maybe draw some lines on there for like details, but you don't really have to like detail the textures and all that. And then there were also these like octagonal uh, little plant pots. They were like labeled with different herbs like rosemary and stuff like that. So for these, it's basically all the same. You fold the like base plant pot, make sure the slit actually lines up with the text in front. And then you just put a little bit of glue on the tabs uh, from the side of the like dirt that you fold over and carefully slide them in. Now the only a bit fiddly part is to get the like dirt part past uh, where the joint is that you previously glued together in plant pot. But honestly, I didn't have too much trouble with that. But it was definitely easier to make the plant pot round first because you had more movement than actually like closing the tap off. And then just sliding in the dirt. So these went actually uh, quite quickly. It was just a little repetitive, but in the end, once they're dried, I could put in all the herbs that belong in there. And I think these are just adorable. I like the variety uh, between all the plant pots and all the things. They could have made them round, but they decided to make them octagonal, just so we have some variety in looks. Because we saw beforehand on the other plant pots that they totally can make the other shapes. So just having this kind of variety and detail, I think is really neat. Some of the items were super simple and you didn't really have to do much. And then there were other items that were actually a bit more challenging, like this watering can. I'm quite impressed that I managed to make a watering can and basically just two parts. The only thing that uh, you need to basically separately place is the spout. But else, like the entire lid, uh, bottom and the handle are actually in one piece. And I really like the design of it. You just fold the handle over and it creates a round shape to actually look like a rounded handle of a watering can. And then you just place in the spout and I think it looks absolutely adorable. Next up we have a palette on the wall and here's actually where the flocking comes in and these vines. And I noticed the vines actually don't come from my sheet. They are extra. I wonder how they got in there actually. Uh, I was very curious at this point. So basically 
all you do is stick in the vines and then flock it but I decided okay I'm gonna actually flock it first so I removed the vines again before the tacky glue was dry which I think is a, a very good idea to do just first do the flocking then add the vines it's way easier to actually manage the flocking because you can like really stick the palette into it and the glue dried a bit too quickly so uh, the flocking didn't really stick too much and it also kind of absorbed it a little bit so in this case I uh, had to apply thicker layer instead of a thinner for the tacky glue but then in the end uh, all I did was scoop off the flocking for some next projects it's a really nice uh, can uh, variety of flocking I like the idea and then basically all I did was add the vines a bit randomly uh, since I had a couple more I added them too and I added them a little bit like differently than what was in the instructions I like turned some of them sideways so they wouldn't really interfere with anything and at this point I noticed that something was wrong you may have seen me pick up that one piece with the gardening tools and the gloss but I never actually finished it because I noticed the base was missing so I continued on with the pieces that I could do. So there should be a shelf um, to the side that co I'm completely missing the sides off after like uh, or the, the base off, not the sides. I'm missing actually the shelf parts. I have the sides but um, the parts where the items actually slot in I'm missing. So I actually uh, forgot to press record again while I was doing the vaults um, because I actually like was still a bit surprised that I'm missing things because at first it didn't look like it. But I decided to just roll with it, uh, put together what I have uh, already, which I'm losing the, uh, basically missing the entire front part, uh, some of the like wood top details that hold this, the right hand side of uh, like part and all that it is like completely missing so all I have is basically just most or almost all of the decoration items which I'm glad I have those uh, but I have none of the shelves uh, from the wall or from the back and uh, from the front where the plants stand in uh, I have none of the like structural parts which was quite a bummer it didn't look like anybody opened this kit, but seeing that there were some extra vines, I think somebody actually opened it before and, and they just sealed it back up with some new tape, which is honestly quite disappointing. Um, I always make sure that when I buy these kinds of things, the seal looks fresh, which it did. So actually having the issue of missing parts was quite sad. Now the next uh, problem I had is I don't really have cardstock uh, that is strong enough to actually support these kinds of things. So I decided, okay, I am gonna make these things out of watercolor paper. I'm gonna like glue two sheets of watercolor paper since it's the thickest paper I have in the studios. Uh, I had some cardboard, but it was entirely the wrong color and I didn't want to use like a pink and a purple cardboard for these kind of things. Uh, so yeah, I could have picked up some cardstock, but at this point it wasn't really worth it anymore and to pick up another kit uh, wasn't really an option. So I decided I'm gonna leave the colors be, I'm just gonna leave the parts white. I think uh, showing what I supplemented in leaving it the white color uh, could also be a pretty neat look. So basically I went ahead uh, roughly measured it out. It's not going to be exact. Um, the watercolor sheets I have are actually out of a watercolor book. Uh, at that point I needed to pick up some new watercolor papers anyways. So I went with what I had and I went along and just held it onto the model, measured out the height and all that stuff and uh, basically like used that as my guide. And then I added some just the leftovers of the like uh, cut out pages where or the, the like laser cut pages that we got supplied with just because they're sturdy I use them as tabs basically just cut off little strips and I did that for all those things I did that for the shelves I did that for the front like beam part um, basically all it was just measuring 
marking out where the tabs are. I, I was really lucky that I at least got the sides of the shelves because these are structural, but I already know that when I make the shelves they will bend a little bit just because, as I said, I don't have this kind of sturdier cardboard but just two layers of watercolor paper. And although it is decently sturdy when you glue it together, uh, it will definitely bend. So I just use my craft knife on both sides, one side to like mark and score and the other side uh, to actually cut, which is a good tip by the way if you just turn your craft knife around if you don't have any tool to like score things for folding. Just turn your craft knife around uh, to the like side of the blade that isn't sharp and just use that for scoring. It will help tremendously to just fold it over. I have a uh, folder thing that I showed you earlier, the, the wood thing, but uh, for this kind of like detail fold where I don't have the fold pre-mark, the craft knife is just a little more exact. So all this was in the end was layering, uh, putting things together and then you can see that for the shelves I actually didn't make tabs, I made like little fold overs uh, and those are for gluing it into uh, the side bases. It will just be a bit more sturdy than having tabs holding it up since, as I said, the material is pretty thin. So all I did was glue the shelves both on one side and then uh, wait for that to dry and then glue the other side. The good thing about these kinds of paper crafts if you don't miss the like very difficult parts, like I'm glad I'm not missing the uh, can or like the plant pots, is that these kinds of things like shelves and stuff are really easy to figure out. And then all I did was add some like little basic cuts uh, measured out where the items would go into the shelves so I can just place them in there. Again, not gonna glue them in there, just place them in there. Uh, so all I did was mark all of the shelves. I tried to like follow the picture in front of the packaging. Uh, just close enough so I can make sure that it looks like somewhat similar. This point of course I could have completely changed it up and just do something different but I decided I wanted to at least try to stay as close to the original as possible. Of course with the colors not matching but in the end it worked out still. As for the fertilizer bags I decided I want them to keep their orientation so you can kind of see uh, one of them and then just have them like stacked so I actually glued them together instead of just putting them into the shells because I knew that uh, with the rounded edges they have if I would just uh, put them in there they would definitely slip and move around more. As you can see the structural integrity of the shelf is not given too too much so I am definitely gluing this one in place just to make sure that it will hold. So I basically just placed it in there, uh, put some glue on the back end and actually uh, glued it on the back wall and into the slits later. In the end I'm glad that I am miss not missing any, most of the like decoration items, if any at all, but just the shelves because those would have been pretty hard to recreate, especially with the details they have. And I'm glad I don't miss the fresh herb shelves because I figured that one would have been a bit harder to actually uh, get right because it is just a challenging item to know just from a picture and some instructions on how the like proportions are, where the slits go and all that. So in the end I think uh, despite missing items I pretty much lucked out on which ones went missing. I can imagine that somebody actually opened this, returned it and they just put a new sticker on after like thinking they checked that it was complete or they didn't even check, they just had a glance inside so there was a sealed bag in there, although you can easily open it because it's a reusable uh, plastic bag and just like put it back on the shelf. Uh, which is sad to see because uh, there was no way of me knowing that it was a use kit and if other people would have missed it, I think they would maybe have like thrown it away or just kept the parts and done something different. But I kind of like the challenge of like trying to make these pieces just to try and see how like 
difficult it is to like really make these kinds of things. You know, honestly, making these kinds of uh, like paper craft dioramas isn't too difficult. The most difficult part is to cut out all the details and get the shapes right, which I'm sure through trial and error, even like something like the watering can you can get. The only thing you need is like a little guide or like, I think with many crafts, if you have seen something done once, it's uh, easier to replicate or if you've actually done something once. Uh, that includes like making like plant pots and the water game can and all that stuff. I'm sure I could have uh, figured it out myself from a basic drawing. It would have probably taken some sketching and some measuring and some trying. And it may not have looked as clean, of course. But I think uh, in the end, if I had done another watering can before, like things like that, I could have managed. Uh, getting the angles right on the plant pots and all that would have been a bit more challenging. But in the end, again, trial and error and going back and forth would have probably also made that possible. But just having like the front part missing and the shelves uh, was still a great help again because also like the details I put on there with like the inscriptions on the plant pots and all that and like the tiny lines they're just not something I could have faithfully and uh, as whimsically replicated and I think it just looks uh, really adorable in the kit so it would have been a shame to not have them but in the end I'm just gonna rate the kit not the missing parts because that is probably a person's fault and not the kid's fault from the looks of it because else I would probably not have had some extra wines and all that. I think they just chucked on the extra parts that they had. I don't even know, maybe they miss messed up their kit when they build it together and then they just pick up another and returned it to get the money back or something like that. Uh, people like that sadly exist. It's uh, quite a shame but uh, that's why we adapt right here. As you can see, I'm actually, when I'm cutting the slits, measuring them on the model uh, for this one because there's no way of me like getting the distances right with just the ruler. So I'm actually using the model here to mark them off and then put them in. To uh, help me make them fit, I'm pushing my knife blade through the cut again just to make sure it's a bit widened because clearly uh, the parts are a bit wider than if I just cut a thin slit in there and so you can already see like the top part is warping a little bit so I didn't really want to like sacrifice any like structural integrity by trying to push uh, the tabs inside there forcefully. And then all I had to add is the like top part and uh, basically that gave it more stability. It of course will always look a bit wobbly but uh, I think it's fine. I think for actually like using just paper and not cardstock uh, I think it's pretty stable and when the glue is fully dried after a few days I'm sure they will be even more stable but for now uh, this has to work. So for the front shelves and all the shelves, I basically just make tiny slots where the items are. I'm gonna randomize them just a tiny bit, especially for the plant pots, just to make it look like somebody put them on there and it's like been moved around a little bit. So I didn't really want to make them like line up perfectly. And in the end, I think it looks uh, pretty nice with that random thing. So for the back shelf, I didn't really film myself making it. It was pretty easy like to make tabs wise and then all I had to add was like the tools and with that I'm actually uh, pretty much done I just need to add some more decorations and that's basically all
So after this ordeal of trying to make the parts myself, in the end it was super super fun to put together. Um, as I said before, I'm just gonna rate the kit, not the actual missing parts, because that is clearly person made. Uh, honestly, the kit was a lot of fun. The tabs fit in there very easily. It was sturdy enough so you can uh, push the pieces together a bit without them actually like really getting creases and looking ugly. And I think they're all adorable. There's a great variation in the plants. I love the idea of the flocking and actually the birdcage hangs from the beam, which is hard to see, but it is actually like hang hanging up there with the string they included. So overall super super adorable um, and I would actually recommend this kit and uh, probably since uh, the quality of this one uh, was pretty good and this one was the more detailed and more difficult, I think the others uh, should be about the same quality. I made sure before I gifted it to my friend that uh, actually it had all the items inside uh, for the other one, so I actually opened it up myself, which it luckily did or it looked like it did. It, I didn't really open the package and check the instructions thoroughly, but I just counted the pieces and made sure that overall it looks like they were there. So I'm sure it's not missing anything. And I hope that when you pick up uh, the kit that it will not be missing anything either. It's always a shame that people just pick things off shelves, take the things they need and then return it. I know people are uh, short of money and uh, it like doesn't really like especially for craft kits and stuff uh, like weren't buying a second one but in the end they could have done what I did and just supplied the parts themselves make them themselves I'm sure that would have been a really nice turn on for a craft kit to just like make the paper parts themselves that they messed up or missing or they could have maybe repaired them. If they of course themselves were missing parts because another person picked on their kit, um, yeah, at that part it's just a sad cycle but overall I managed to like fix it I think. I still think it looks really adorable with all the details and yes that you can see the white parts that I'm missing. I'm totally okay with. I actually like the look of it. It looks like uh, there's something missing construction wise like color wise like it was like in a planning stage but I still like it and like for things like the shelves the white actually fits it's just that uh, wood parts in the front uh, definitely look a bit strange but if I ever pick up a uh, cardstock that has a similar color to the back color and is sturdy enough, I might just uh, replace all of those pieces, but leave the shells as they are because, as I said, I, I think they look adorable. And the white actually matches. Like, why not have white countertops or white shelving? Uh, it definitely doesn't really matter. And as I said, the details are still there. We still have the printer parts like the jars and all that, uh, which are so, so adorable. So yeah, overall a really good kit and I think this would actually be a good kit also for people that don't craft much because it's just so easy to put together. You don't really have to have much, you just have to have like some kind of glue or tacky glue. I'm sure you could even, if you're quick enough, use super glue, though that might get a bit messy. So tacky glue is definitely uh, the best suggestion here. And then you just need the kit. So basically like two things, glue and the kit, which is super simple. I know there's many of these kind of paper craft kits out there. This one was a uh, pretty affordable one and would run over pretty quick. So I think this one uh, might actually be good for people that want to get into paper crafts or just want to try it out and not really want to get one of these like really elaborate expensive ones. Just something really cute, whimsical and simple to like put together in like maybe an afternoon project or something like that. You know, there's like entire like sets with like really detailed gardens and libraries and stuff that may even have like the jam jar and the bottle 3D uh, like run and all that stuff. But uh, I think this still looks really detailed and nice with all the plants and all that. So definitely uh, worth a pickup. Just make sure that uh, that counts for most craft supplies. Um, 
make sure that you check beforehand if they're closed. I also had it before at the same store that uh, Varnish was open and was missing a third of it, which is, yeah, I just dropped it out at the cashier and they were like, oh no, that stuff is like a plastic seal, that dried stuff. It was clearly like spilled out Varnish, somebody must have filled it into another bottle. Um, in the end, I didn't pick that uh, bottle up because I knew it was actually opened and I never missed like a third of the contents and it's just a shame that first of all the store doesn't seem to check it but also that people have to resort to these kinds of things to do crafts and stuff especially in this day and age where everything gets more expensive but I think that doesn't really aren't going in there and actually stealing from kids because that just ruins another person's experience in the worst case when they pick it up and don't notice or like in my case I couldn't like see that my kit was opened before there was no like indication that the sticker has been removed before and I think that just thought. Anyways, I uh, still hope you all enjoyed watching uh, me trying to save this kit and got some inspirations maybe to make your own paper craft, pick up some kits, maybe even like gift ideas because as I said, these are pretty affordable and they're super cute and easy to make even for people that don't usually craft. Uh, so maybe if you have like a friend that doesn't usually craft but likes these kind of cute and whimsical things, uh, these kinds of kits I think would be really ideal for them. I actually met a lot of people that did these kinds of kits or the more elaborate ones uh, before even though they usually aren't the crafter but they quite enjoy it uh, just sitting down like some afternoons and just putting them together. And since Christmas is around the corner again maybe you have a friend or family that uh, you want to pick some of these kits up for. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day. See you next time. Bye bye!